the Lord put something more in my heart as far as the last video that I that I made about the wedding feast with Jesus and the bride and the church is the bride and we have Jesus who is the groom amen um, he led me to Revelation chapter 19 19 6 Revelation and it says here it says then I heard again what sounded like the shout of a vast crowd or the roar of the mighty ocean waves or the crash of loud thunder praise the Lord for the Lord our God the Almighty reigns let us be glad and rejoice and let us give honor to him for the time has come for the wedding feast of the Lamb and his bride has prepared herself his bride has prepared herself so we are to prepare ourselves us as Christian brothers and sisters we are to prepare ourselves for Jesus Christ's return amen and then it says she which is us has been given the finest of pure white linen to wear for the fine linen represents the good deeds of God's holy people so that linen that white linen is given to you by God by our father and the linen actually represents the good deeds that we have done through the Holy Spirit through the Holy Spirit not through our own thinking and not through our own spirit but through the Holy Spirit okay and I'll, I'll just ask you this question that how can you do good deeds without the Holy Spirit and how can you receive the Holy Spirit if you don't have faith in God? And how can you have faith in God if you don't have a relationship with God? What I'm getting to is that sometimes we as Christians, we like to cheat on God. We like to turn our backs to God. We like to prostitute ourselves to, to other gods or to other things. We don't even really call them gods. Instead, we just call them things that can help us or things that can give us life or things that can make us feel better such as if you have a bad week you go ahead drinking on a weekend getting torn up ripped up or you do some drugs or you do some pills you know your uppers and your downers oh uh, oh i had a wild week i need to get me some downers or oh, i'm kind of tired this week oh, i need to get some uppers or drinking or just partying just, just partying, getting torn up and lit up and just cursing all the time. Saying all these dirty jokes. But we don't make a big deal out of it, but we do it every week. Or we do it every certain time of the month. And we just find it as normal. That's cheating on God. And we don't find a problem with it. We don't repent. We don't come to God. We don't come to God on our knees and surrender. We're not forthcoming with God. Can you imagine this? You're in a relationship with someone or you have a spouse and your spouse knows that you're cheating. He don't he doesn't say anything or she doesn't say anything. And you just go about your ways, you walk in in the house and you walk out of the house and you go about your day and your spouse or your partner is waiting for you to come forward and tell the truth. Your partner already knows the truth. Your spouse already knows the truth. And you continue just cheating on them. Because you're like, oh, okay, if they don't know, if they ain't seen nothing, then they must not know. That's what some Christians think sometimes. If God isn't saying any, anything to me, then he must not know about it. If God isn't saying anything about my drinking, if God isn't saying any, anything about my foul language, if God isn't saying anything about me taking these upwards and downers or just doing all kinds of sins, then... You must not know about it and that's the issue sometimes that people don't get in touch with God so that God can say something about it some people they're so shameful that they don't even want to get in touch with God at all they don't want to study his scriptures they don't want to talk to him at all they don't find a problem with it either it's shameful on, on, on their heart or it's pridefulness and I'll tell you this that it's better for a Christian to receive shame rather than pridefulness because with pridefulness, you think there's no problem with it. There's no problem with it. But with shame, there's a problem. And that shame builds up. And soon enough, all that shame will, will be heavy on you. And then soon enough, you'll have to come to God. But 
if you don't have a good, a good trusting relationship with God, then you're not going to be ready. You're not going to be given fine linen by God. And on the day of judgment, on the day of judgment, what makes you think that God is going to have a mercy upon you? He had mercy upon you your whole life. He's given you his grace, his mercy, his one and only son, all kinds of messages, time to repent repeatedly, and you continue to cheat on him. How do you think he's going to feel about that on the day of judgment? You think he's going to forget? Will he forgive? Well, let me ask you this question. Is God all forgiving if you don't repent? Is God all forgiving if you don't come to him and you're not forthcoming with him? Is he all forgiving? Let's be honest. He's merciful if you come to him. But if you don't come to him, is he forgiving? And people get this thing in their mind that, oh yeah, Jesus died for my sins. I could do whatever I want to do. Jesus died for my sins. So if I sin, I, if I do anything I want to do, then I'm automatically forgiven. That's the wrong aspect. That's, that's a bad interpretation of Christianity. And those are the Christians that don't study the scriptures. They don't understand the scriptures. They twist the scriptures. Listen, we need to be ready for when he returns. In order to do that, we need to have a good relationship with God. Be in touch with God every single day. Repent every single day if you sinned. I understand we're not perfect, but we... we ought to be transformed into his likeness and allowing him to spiritually transform us into perfection spiritually amen so the more you get in touch with god the better relationship that you have with god the more likeness you'll have in you of him right but that's all i wanted to say guys that's all i wanted to get off my chest stay devoted to god give your allegiance to god stop being afraid of change if you're afraid of change, that means you don't trust God. And as far as I know, God has been so faithful to us. He has been so faithful time and time and time and time and time again. So why aren't you faithful? Alright, that's all I gotta say. Jesus first, God first, and me the kingdom always comes first. Amen.